today. From the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, this is Matt NFL 21 on EA Sports. We'll see Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints taking on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Greg Zerline now, he'll handle the honors to get us started. And we are underway from the Superdome. Taken about seven yards deep, and they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. The Saints trot onto the field behind the veteran right arm of Drew Brees, a former Purdue border maker who entered the league back in 2001. Total relentlessness of consistency, almost like a machine. If you watch him in practice after every throw, he resets his feet, visualizes all the other options on a play. So if he has to do it in a game, it's already there, has the muscle memory. I start calling him AI for artificial intelligence. Whatever defense does during a game, he absorbs it and then uses it against them as the game moves on. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the 34-yard line. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Now we'll see what the right arm of Dak Prescott has in store as the Dallas Cowboys offense sets up shop. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. And they can't corral it. And they're going to get this all the way out past the 20. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. That type of run right there, that just fires me up when I watch it because that's maybe the most underrated aspect of his game. The ability to break tackles and know where the first down chains are and pick them up. He's tough, good pedigree. Dad Stacy was a linebacker at Missouri. Yeah, and how about mom on the track team? So I think that's where the speed came from. And, she just, and she's not shy about letting us know that, too. <laughs> yeah, you got the best of both worlds. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Now he'll pull it down. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. to back good plays have them on the move on first down 
Prescott from the gun. Rolling to his left. Letting, and that's caught inside the 35. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. What a play that turns out to be. 36 yards. For a quarterback, there's two sides to this coin. Either he had complete faith that his guy would go up and get the ball, or his throw was up for grabs. Which one do you think he'll tell the coach when he goes to the sidelines? So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. This is Allian. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Demario Davis there on the stop. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can... And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. And it appears that this was just a letdown from the offensive line, but they do have a tough job because if you're a big tackle out there on the perimeter, sometimes you don't have the agility to keep up with the defensive end. Who's looking to wreak havoc in the backfield, and he got there and put his man on the ground. And yeah, the next-gen stat's going to illustrate just how quickly a quarterback has to process everything as he was on the ground in under three seconds, 2.9 to be precise. Rolling to his right. Throw across his body, and it's intercepted. John C. Gardner Johnson will pick, and the return will stop right around the 25. Well, I get what he was trying to do. He was moving to his right and trying to shift the coverage, but instead he shifted the coverage also to the right and threw right into it for an interception. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Third and two. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That's good for a save. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Staying on the ground on first with Kamara. And he's got this one across midfield into Cowboy territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brings up second and five. They'll run out of the gun with Kamara. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 11 yards there, first down. First and 10 at the 37. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. No score after one on EA Sports. On first down, Breeze. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and seven. From the gun, it's Breeze. And that'll be incomplete. From the sideline. And so third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Yards to go. Shotgun now for Breeze. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown.
special there. Boy, was he moving. And sometimes you see big plays develop on a route like this, a slam route. And the object, very simple. Get the ball to your receiver in stride. This one was right on the money. He didn't miss a beat. And then it's off to the races. And there he goes. And according to Next Gen Stats, his top speed on that one, better than 20 miles an hour. Will Lutz on for the point after. The Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. This is Tony Pollard. A second broken tackle. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. They had the interception last time. It led to the opening touchdown. So now 7-0 the score as they start first and 10. On the move to his left. He'll run it. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. The linebacker, Demario Davis, got a hand in to break that one up. Four minutes to play here in quarter number two. Throwing again, Prescott on second and ten. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Oh, free safety blitz. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. And that's caught inside the 35. It's a big play there on third down. 42 yards for an offense that has not found the end zone yet. That's a big play. There's the spark right there. The big play that they needed. Now they've got to go ahead and finish this drive and put this ball in the end zone. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. It's second and inches. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. Dancing to his left. And he is into the end zone for the Cowboy touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys are an extra point away from tying the football game. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? 
The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything is working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on on the defensive That's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Now left side on the swing pass. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Second and Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And the catch made, this is Emmanuel Sanders. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. This is complete to Michael Thomas. 11 more on that one, and another first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now, we had a guy who made the catch. They try to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And it's third down. And 10 yards to go. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Now Dak Prescott of the offense heading back on the field. And he's been busy with his feet. He's been quite the scrambling man. And obviously that can break down a defense, but a lot of it is just that they just get trapped with worrying about it so much that other things break down as well. You know, you break the huddle, and you're not just playing what comes out at you. You're like, oh, God, don't let him outside of the pocket. Don't let him beat us with his legs. And then he starts to beat you other ways. Flushed out right. Now on the run. He'll throw it back deep over the middle. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Janoris Jenkins with good coverage that time as he was able to get in there and knock it away. Well, that was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. This time they stay on the ground. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Deontay Harris deep for New Orleans. Harris returning. A nice run back there off the good punt. It's a 16-yard return. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. On first and 10, here's Breeze. That'll be complete to Cook. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room, 7-7 seven, seven hour score. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He he has our EA Sports halftime report. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank 
Thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. That'll be taken about a yard deep. Pollard elects to keep it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things did we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him. And once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, he's just going to keep right on going. And if you're wondering how fast he was going, Next Gen Stats clocked him at close to 21 miles an hour. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. Prescott steps away. Got an open man. It's Michael Gallup. And he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he here also picks up a here first down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. to the 10 and he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. A 21-yard touchdown run and the Cowboys have taken the lead. Well, pardon me, that was another explosive run and one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need difference maker lugging the rock now Zerline on and the extra point and he's got it it's now a 14-7 ball game the drive there only spanning three plays and it culminates in a touchdown run by Ezekiel Elliott Greg Zerline to kick off for Dallas now after the touchdown it's Zerline he'll kick it away Fielded near the back of the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Now Breeze. And brought in by the tight end Cook. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball and puts it right out there for the nice pickup. Breeze's throw gonna be caught by Sanders and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. First down, first and 10 at the 44 yard line.
Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And down to the 36-yard line here. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the Cowboys. Again, it's Kamara. And he's got this pretty close to a first down at the Cowboys 29. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Breeze on the draw, gives to Kamara. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now they'll throw with Breeze. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. It'll be a gain of 11, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. On third down, that's a good job of situational football, understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Bree's going to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. At the five-yard line. On second down, Kamara. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. That almost looked too easy. And I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A 10-play drive that time. And the capper came from Alvin Kamara on the touchdown run. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. At their own 23-yard line. Zeke and the Cowboys ready to begin their next drive. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Now, those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now Elliott muscles him off. Marcus Davenport there to take him down. The ball carrier, the stop by Marcus Davenport. A gain of a yard brings up second and nine at the Saints 48-yard line. 
And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They go to Elliott again. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. He may try and run for this. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Move it around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. First down, Prescott being chased out left. He's going to take off with it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and 10. They'll try to throw now. Prescott. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. Amari Cooper, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Tim Carey now for Elliott. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards. Back to the 33. It's a loss of 10 yards on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? And we will not see a run back here from Harris. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Breeze now on first down. And complete right side to Cook. And they finally get him down, but not before he reaches the 34. A big time play there for New Orleans. 41 yards. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Throwing now is Breeze. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Breeze. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Breeze to throw. And that will be incomplete. So the pass goes out of bounds, but he was not outside of the tackle box when he threw that. He's got to be careful. You and I both know if it's even close, they're going to give it to the quarterback. They don't want to throw that flag unnecessarily. So if you're just in the area, you're going to be okay. 
that ties the game at seven. So a big kick to get this back to even. Yet now the worry is, did you leave too much time on the clock? Because another field goal the other way, that does you in. You're exactly right. You didn't get it to overtime yet. So now as a defense, you've got to think to yourself, you can't play prevent defense and just give up big chunks of yardage in front of you, but you also can't let anyone behind you. So you sit right on the line between the two, play the best defense you can, and not make it easy for them to move the ball downfield. They'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, Cowboys! Michael Gallup, 79 yards. And the Cowboys have broken the tie. For as big and strong as some of these guys are, especially when you see them in full pads, it is sometimes hard to appreciate how truly fast they can move. That was incredible. And normally when you see guys moving this fast, it might be a fly pattern from a receiver or a toss sweep from a tailback or something like that. This was designed as a passing play, and then he got out of the pocket, and he just took off, and he just kept gaining momentum with every step. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. take a seven-point lead now. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. Brings Zerline to kick off for Dallas. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. So Breeze and the Saints down 24-17. A little over a minute and a half remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. They'll look to throw. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. And Cook has it, left side. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play, because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Trayvon Diggs. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Well, that's about as tough as they come. You're driving to try to put the ball in the end zone and tie the game, and that happens. It's exciting for us, wasn't it? Because we were thinking, hey, we might be headed towards overtime. Instead, it looks like this one may very well be done. And guess what? If you're a fantasy owner and you have that defense, you just had a big, big game, didn't you? Zerline now for the PAT. And the lead is up to 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And we will not see a run back here from Harris. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> From the gun on third down, Breeze. Now a desperate... And this will be caught at the 30. 
And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. That's one heck of a third down conversion, a pickup of 39. It's a great throw right there and really showed a lot of confidence in his receiver. He certainly did. Ball was in the air a long time, but he counted on the adjustment that we saw near the end of the play. As that ball was descending, who was going to come down with it? He counted on his guy, and he gambled correctly. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. He's going to let it fly. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just get a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. you got a one-score game now going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, you get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. And the Cowboys are going to secure the football, and with it, they'll just about secure the victory as well. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Here's Elliott. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one.